Hi guys, welcome to Code Decode. Today in this video, we are going to cover some more important microservices interview questions. Please like, share and subscribe to support us and we are setting a like target of 500 likes. Today we will be focusing on ways to communicate between different microservices. So if you have two or three multiple microservices and they want to communicate with each other, how many ways do we have so that they can communicate? The very first method is through synchronous communication. Now we are not going to get into much deeper into this type of communication because we have already seen the REST APIs which was the synchronous communication for us. Here, I suppose we have two microservices, microservice 1 and microservice 2. Now microservice 1 wants some data from microservice 2 then it will send a request to microservice 2. Microservice 2 will process the request and sends back the response to microservice 1. Microservice 1 will wait for this response and this is a synchronous communication. Example of this is already we have seen that is REST APIs. The second example of synchronous communication is through GraphQL. The third is through fake client using Eureka discoveries and the fourth is gRPC. Now in our IT life we must have used at least two of these synchronous communications where GRPC is the most common one nowadays because GRPC has proven itself 10 times faster than the REST APIs. It is developed by Google and is a substitute for REST with many more new features. So if you want to know more about the GRPC and how to implement in your project and what are pros and cons, you have to let me know in the comment section so that I'll create a video on GRPC. Or if you want to know more about GraphQL also, you can let me know in the comment section. Now, in a synchronous call, the service waits for the response after performing a request. So here, our service used to wait for the response after sending the request. Today, we will focus more upon the asynchronous communication because this is the untouched part in microservices right now. And this is the most commonly asked questions in interviews because this increases the performance of a system a lot. So this communication usually involves some kind of messaging systems like RabbitMQ, ActiveMQ and Kafka. So let's first see what is asynchronous communication. In asynchronous communication, to initiate such type of communication, a microservice who wants to send some data to microservices publishes a message to a separate component known as message broker. So in the asynchronous communication, the major task is done by the message broker and it is responsible for handling the messages sent by producer and the message broker guarantees the message delivery. It is a task of message broker to make sure the message reaches to the required microservice. Suppose this microservice one is a vaccination center. Vaccination center has some slots available. So there is one more microservice, slots information microservice, who is responsible for maintaining all the slots available for each vaccination center available in the system. So what vaccination center will send it is a slot information, how many slots is available. So it will send the slot information, it will receive the slot information and save it in database. So that next time when a citizen service, microservice 3 citizen service, tries to book a slot, it will ask from the slot information, is there any slot available for vaccination center V1? So it will ask this particular microservice. It will query the database and will return is it available or not. If it is available, book it else. Just uh, try to find another vaccination center. So this type of communication can be done through asynchronous communication also. So what my vaccination center will do is it will say I have 18 slots available. It will send this 18 slots availability to this message broker. ActiveMQ, RabbitMQ or Kafka and start doing some something else. It will start doing its own task for the vaccination center, registration, verification, everything. So it will send the data to this message broker and forgets it. This slot information microservice will fetch this data availability for vaccination center V1 and store it in DB in an asynchronous manner. So basically microservice 1 will not wait for microservice 2 to store the information it has sent that it has 18 slots available in its database. It will continue its task and it will not wait for response that yes, I have stored your 18 slot availability in my database. It will not wait. It will go and proceed with the another task. So basically in asynchronous communication, a microservice vaccination center will send some data to the slot information microservice through a separate component known as message broker. Message broker is responsible for, for handling the data sent by vaccination center to slot information center and message broker will guarantee the message delivery to the slot information service. After the message is received by the broker, so when the message is received by this particular broker, 
it is now its job to pass the message to the target service which is the slot information microservice if the recipient is down at the moment now what will happen if your slot microservice is down if it would have been the rest api case then you will get a 404 not found a 500 internal server your application will fail your request will fail because it is synchronous but in the case of async communication if the microservice 2 is down then also your task will be done because the broker might be configured to retry as long as the necessary successfully delivery is done so what message broker will do is it will store this slot information of 18 availability in vaccination center 1 in its own memory and will wait and try until the microservice 2 is up as soon as microservice 2 is up it will push the message back to microservice 2 microservice 2 will get the information okay microservice 1 has sent that vaccination center 1 has 18 slots available it will save it in your database so this is much more fault resilient and fault tolerant than the rest apis because if it this whole communication would have been through rest apis if microservice sends one rest api call saying vaccination center 1 has 18 slots and the microservice 2 is down it will send a response back 500 internal server error or some kind of error that the service is down and your message will be lost so these messages will be persisted in the message broker and stored in the memory whenever microservice one is up it will be successfully delivered but if the message broker is restarted or message broker is down then that will be the case when you will lose your data so there is a chance of fault here also and that will be the case when your message broker is down if the message broker is down then the message which is stored in the memory will be lost since the broker is responsible for delivering the message, it's no longer necessary for both the service to be up for successful communication. Now, to ensure the fault tolerance, at least it is not necessary for microservice 1 and microservice 2 to be up all the time and be tightly coupled. Because in, sy in synchronous communication and REST APIs, if either microservice 1 is down or microservice 2 is down, in both the cases, your message will be lost. So this is tightly coupled. It means that if you want your REST APIs to be successful, it means your two microservices should be tightly coupled and must be up all the time to be communicating with each other. But this is not the case with the async communication. It is the broker who is responsible for delivering the message and hence none of the services has to be up all the time. Async communication hence mitigates or removes the biggest problem of synchronous communication that is tight coupling this async communication makes these two microservices loosely coupled so the relevant point here is that the sender does not need to wait for the response so the point here is that microservice one will not wait for the response from microservice two that yes i have received the data slot information microservice will receive the message in its own time and the sending microservice that is vaccination center is not blocked or logged at all it simply fires the message that vaccination center one has 18 slots and forget about it the rest of the task will be done by the message broker message broker will store it in its own database and whenever microservice 2 is up and ready to receive the message it will push that message to microservice 2 now a very important thing that we've already seen this is a fault tolerant communication method but what if the message broker who is storing your information that 18 slots are available is restarted or is down and the message stored that 18 uh, slots are available is lost in that case message broker is a vital part of asynchronous communication architecture and hence must be fault tolerant so there are multiple ways to make this also fault tolerant this can be achieved by setting up multiple additional standby replicas of the broker so that can do failover methods since even with auxiliary replicas failure in the messaging services might happen from time to time the very first method to make the broker fault tolerance is to have replicas of broker so you can have multiple broker here and if this particular broker fails you can use the this this particular broker it will have the replica and copy of the existing broker now there are many many methods in which this particular message broker can be made fault tolerant if you want to know more about the fault tolerance of the message broker let me know in the comment section i'll move ahead with the type of async communications we have so commonly there are two type of options in the message based communication first is point to point and second is publish subscriber in point to point communication we have queues in publish subscribers we have topics 
So in point to point communication, a queue will be used in this type of communication. The service produces a message. Let's see it through the diagram. So in this type of point to point communication, there is only one producer that is microservice one and there is one consumer that is microservice two. No multiple publish subscriber things here, just point to point from one to another through a queue. So the service that produces the message called the producer of the sender will send the message to the queue in one message broker. So it will send the message to this queue. And the service that has an interest in that message is called the consumer. So this is Microsoft Store is a receiver. In our example, this is vaccination center and this is slot information microservice. So slot information microservice will consume the message from the queue and carry out the further process of the message. Only one message can be sent by the producer, can be consumed by only one receiver and the message will be deleted after it is consumed. So very important thing to note here is that as soon as your message receives the consumer, the slot information, the message will be deleted from the broker and actually practically in the memory where the broker is storing all its messages. If the receiver or an interested service is down, so if microservice 2 is down, the message will remain persisted in that queue until the receiver is up and consumes the message. So the message will be stored in this message broker until and unless message service, the microservice 2, that is slot information microservice, is, is successfully up and is capable enough to pull the message from the broker. For this reason, message-based communication is one of the best choice for microservice resilience. So this is why we can say that this is much more resilient way than synchronous one. The popular choices for such kind of point-to-point -point communication is RabbitMQs and EbitMQs. So ActiveMQs and RabbitMQs are uh, much more efficient in queuing systems with point-to-point -point communications. The second type of communication is Publish Subscriber or Synchronous Communication. So in Publish Subscriber model, the topic is used. The topic in the message broker will be used to store the message sent by publisher and then subscriber that subscribes to that topic will consume the messages. So this was point to point communication. Only one service used to send data to the queue and only one used to take from the queue. But in the publish subscribe model, there will be multiple microservices who will be subscribing to this topic. And this is not a queue. This is a topic now. There will be one sender. There will be multiple multiple consumers and all these consumers who are interested in the messages sent by this microservice one will subscribe to the topic. So the, the topic in the message broker will use to store data sent by the publisher and then subscribers subscribe to that topic will consume the message. Unlike point to point communication, the message will be ready to consume for all subscribers and the topic can have one or more subscribers. The message remains persisted in a topic until we delete it. So in point to point communication, we used to delete the message as soon as the receiver receives it. But in topic, there are multiple receivers. So until we don't go and delete the data in the topic, it is not going to be deleted. In message based communication, the services that consumes the message either from the queue or topic must know the common message structure that is produced or published by the producer. So one disadvantage of message-based communication is that there is one format in which the producer sends the message and the subscriber subscribe to that message. And they both have to come in between and agree to the contract of the format of message-based communication. To mitigate this issue of one knowing the other's message format, there is event-based communications. Now the example of this published subscriber is Kafka, a very important messaging system. If you want me to implement Kafka in real times for you, and even if you want to, if you want me to implement the gRPC or the GraphQL or the other type of synchronous communication methods, you have to let me know in the comment section. I'll create a separate proof of concept or a small demo for you on the same. Now moving ahead to the event-based communication, unlike message communication systems, we have seen previously the point-to-point -point and publish subscriber. In event-based communication, especially in event-driven design pattern, the services that consumes the message, that is the consumer, does not need to know details of the message format. In event-driven pattern, the services just push the event to the topic and then services then subscribe to the topic will react to each event in the topic. Each event in the topic will be related to some business logic. So basically, in, in summary, in, in this particular type of communication, it is 
events which flow from producer to consumer in the case of events the message format doesn't matter and hence the producer and consumer does not need to agree to the common contract of the messaging that is the event based communication we will be covering this event based communication in the event driven design patterns when we are going to cover the design patterns used in the microservice which is a very frequently asked interview questions now how asynchronous communication and synchronous communication works which do you use in your project what is the pros of using synchronous communication or asynchronous communication and when to use which type of communication we will we need all those to be covered in the next part if you want me to cover more such and you want me to cover the live examples of kafka and graphql and grpc you have to let me know in the comment section thank you